our studios SF Live, Robert King Wilkerson. Um, we call him King, and King uh, was a Black Panther and unfortunately uh, had to do 31 years in Angola State Prison, also known as The Farm, and 29 years in solitary confinement. We're going to hear more from King in a minute, but right now I want to share with you a commentary or excerpts from a commentary by Mumia Abu-Jamal, also a, a former Black Panther, who um, wrote about the death, the murder, uh, or should I say assassination, of Fred Hampton. It was December 4th, 1969, an early morn when most people turn over in their sleep when a creeping death squad of Chicago, Chicago cops raided an apartment on Monroe Street in a premeditated plan to murder Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton, 21-year-old leader of the Illinois Black Panther Party and a master organizer. Sleeping beside him was his young wife, Deborah, now known as Akua, and sleeping within her, under her heart, was a black baby boy who was swimming in a salty sea inches away from the father that his eyes would never see alive, Fred Hampton, Jr. For Chicago cops, aided and abetted by J. Edgar Hoover's FBI and a traitorous black snitch, were determined that Fred Hampton would not live another day. The cops, black cops among them, shot over 100 bullets into the apartment, killing Fred and Captain Mark Clark, then 20. A young panther visiting Chicago from Pretoria, from Peoria, Illinois. Typically, the cops lied for weeks about the raid until independent investigations proved it wasn't a shootout but a shoot-in, with cops firing a hundred shots and a panther, Captain Clark, firing one as they came through the door. Panthers were shot in their beds. Fred was dosed with a barbiturate laced into his soda by panther trader William O'Neill. He slept through his own assassination by government agents. And the government, of course, has been very busy making sure that political prisoners are not released. Welcome to freedom, Robert King Wilkerson. It's so good to have you here. Thank you, Kilo. I'm and happy to be here. Yes. Delighted. Tell us about yourself, first of all, and then about this uh, horrendous experience uh, that you've had. Well, um, as you pointed out, my name is uh, Robert, well, for literary reason, I would say Robert King Wilkerson. For 50 years or so, I was Robert King Wilkerson. However, my legal name is Robert H. King, and uh, I'm uh, also known as one of the free members, uh, the only free member of the Angola through the three. The other two uh, have a, a Wood Fox and, and Herman Wallace. Um, I was released. Um, 2001, after 31 years uh, in penitentiary, Louisiana State Penitentiary, 29 of those were spent in solitary confinement. Uh, Herman and Albert, however, remain uh, in prison. And um, that's Herman Wallace and yeah, Albert Herman Wallace Woodfox. Herman Wallace and Albert Woodfox. The other two remaining members of the Angola Three remain in prison, convicted um, um, for their alleged participation in the death of a, a prison guard, Brent Miller. Uh, they now uh, have been in prison um, and falsely convicted for this crime. All the evidence show that they're actually innocent. No forensic evidence linked them to this crime. Now for um, going on 36 years. And all of these 36 years, except for about uh, maybe six months, the last six months or so, has been spent in solitary confinement. Um, previously, prior to being moved to a solitary camp, they were in solitary confinement cells, six by nine by 12 feet um, in diameter. And they were there, as I say, for uh, 36 years and counting. And they were removed uh, to a dormitory, uh, which is also considered solitary. It's a solitary camp. They are still not, um, they don't have access to the main prison population. They are not there, and they don't have access to certain materials. 
Um, so it's it's still a segregated unit. It's of segregated the and it's still uh, sort of solitary because you're away from the main prison population. And despite the fact that there are other prisoners there, maybe 18 or 19, in sort of like a huge cell. It's a dormitory, but it's more like a huge cell. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all of these people are housed there, and they're uh, they're not in uh, connection, or they don't have contact with the main prison population. Right, and I'm, I imagine they don't have main, mainline privileges. No, they do not. Um, do they have contact visits, for example? Uh, yes, that has been increased. When they were, uh, it took a while when there were, um, there was some uh, litigation, some legal challenge that uh, over the years that we went through that we uh, uh, obtained some rights. Uh, one was uh, having contact visits, and it was once a month prior to uh, them being released or prior to their being re uh, released from the cells to a huge uh, dormitory, which is also solitary lack. Uh, it was, you know, uh, prior to that time, it was, you know, a uh, uh, visit was limited once a month. A non contact visit uh, has improved to some degree, um, but uh, they are still, you know, uh, held in solitary like condition. They are still separated from the main prison population, and they are still under vicious scrutiny by the prison administration. Uh, Kilo, as you know, uh, 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 Herman and Albert case legally, they are still alive. And we have managed the, the National Coalition and International Coalition to Free the Angola Three has has managed to garner support and managed to keep the cases alive. So Herman and Albert cases are very much alive. About uh, maybe a year ago, um, a state court uh, suggested that his case be overturned, at least a commissioner. But it was a judge who did not accept the, the recommendation of his commissioner and he uh, rescinded her order, and now he is uh, back in the state court. Um, the legal team bring, uh, plans to bring his case, uh, has brought his case before the Louisiana State Supreme Court. Uh, and it is on appeal, uh, that decision that was, uh, that would, you know, that granted him a new trial in which the judge refused to accept the commissioner's uh, report. Uh, Albert, uh, some maybe two, three months ago, a federal court granted him Havis Corpus, Havis Relief, and ordered his uh, release, or ordered that he be retried or released. And since that time, we have initiated, the, the legal team and people who are working and supporters have sort of initiated a strategy to try to get him released on bond. But we are dealing with a vicious um, force um, because, as you know, uh, the people who are in power now some former prosecutors, some are friend of former prosecutors. Uh, they have taken up the legacy of lie and the legacy of racism and hatred that has uh, impaired this case, that have been a very much a part of this case because in the conviction, you know, and as it are constantly brought out, no, there was no forensic evidence linking either Albert nor Herman nor the other two individuals who was charged in the death of a, a correctional officer at that time. This took place in um, um, 1972, um, they were arrested while in prison. Right. And yeah, they were arrested and they were um, indicted by a grand jury and they were subsequently uh, convicted uh, despite any um, evidence uh, actually, again, linking them to it the crime. It was really a politically motivated they did frame up. Very, and this is why I And it wasn't it really because the three of you were members mm -hmm. of uh, one of the first chapters behind the walls of the Black Panther Party, and it was my understanding that uh, uh, you were uh, making some serious changes in the practices that were going on in terms of guard brutality, uh, the, common, uh, the commonality of rapes, and yes. so on. Uh, yes, Would of you course. break that down? Yes, I could elaborate a little bit on that. Herman and Albert, you know, um, um, uh, leaving or uh, being sent from the, uh, New Orleans Pass Prison to Angola at the time, and after having become members of the Black Panther Party, they decided to bring the ideology into the to the prison. At that time, Angola was considered. This was in 1971, 1972. Angola was considered one of uh, the most rather bloodiest prison in the nation. There were constant uh, killing of inmate upon inmate. Um, uh, most of this was instigated. Uh, uh, at least uh, accepted by the guards. Uh, of course, you know that, as you alluded to, there were inmate guards 
they were who were given guns to lord watch over other inmates and these inmate guards they abused their privilege uh, many of uh, these guards were used to at least all of them were used either to demand the the, uh, the work line people who worked in the field um, they were the, like I could say the backbone of security all of the towers was manned by these uh, inmate guards um, they carried all the weapons from the high powered rifle uh, to the to the baton that was used to to brutalize prisoners and uh, these guards act actively took part in in that uh, one of them uh, the most brutal thing that they took part in was the uh, the uh, uh, you know the perpetration of, of rape and selling young inmates uh, among the general population uh, this uh, became a selling a, inmates a, of course they partook part 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 in the selling of younger inmates you know uh, in into Angola because they were in position to do so they would uh, brutalize and intimidate a younger inmates and then turn him over to another inmate uh, uh, who was not not to, uh, you know, could not have been, a, you know, a guard or anything like that, but just another inmate in population. But inmates also themselves, you know, um, took also, uh, took part in these type of things. Uh, sometime uh, uh, there were so-called weak inmates coming into, or young inmates coming into prison, and a lot of the guys, you know, uh, in prison at that time used to work. There was a, a day that, that was known as Fresh Fish Day. Um, there was a, a classification board met uh, like every Thursday, and, they process new inmates in, and they, they would have guys waiting in line to, to claim younger inmates. But all of these type of things were going on. A lot of time, these inmates were were prepped and primed for this, you know, uh, during the quarantine time that they spent in a place called AU, a uh, receiving center, uh, admitting unit. Mm -hmm. And they were primed for this. So when they got, they were, they were intimidated, and they were, you know, they were really feared they were they was I mean they was really scared about going into the man prison population. So when they got to the man prison population it was sorta of easy for guys to just grab and I mean intimidate them and abuse them and use them exactly like they want. Herman and Albert along with other members of uh, the Black Panther Party, sympathizers and empathizers of the party, what it did was kind of curtail this. Uh, not that the Black Panther Party was homophobic or anything like that. It's just that in a in a condition of that force into homosexuality well, was thing that uh, the Black Panther Party did not tolerate. And so Herman and Albert and uh, other people played a great part in uh, bringing a lot of this stuff down that was going on at that time. They putting started, a stop to it. Right. They, they started political education classes. That was racism was rampant. Paint. That was 17 hour day wake period at two cents an hour. Uh, when it rained, you, did, uh, you know, uh, you, you did not have a raincoat to work in the field. At that time, the biggest crop was uh, sugar cane. And, you know, the, uh, regardless, it was seasonal. And when usually the rainy season come during the time of sugar cane, well, if you didn't have a raincoat, you worked anyway in the field. How many hours? 17 hours, hours in At rain. two cents an hour cutting sugar cane because Ooh, it was the main crop at that time. Hour. Of course, of course, it has been increased since then. Now that the minimum wage there is four cents an hour. Four cents. Oh, yes. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have to laugh to keep from crying. Um, the uh, I understand Angola. Um, there's a film, by the way, called The Farm that mm -hmm. gives you, uh, that's available on DVD, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but it was actually a, a slave plantation. Yes. I uh, mean, it's still a slave plantation in a very real sense. Of course. But it day. was, uh, you know, a plantation during the during chattel during slavery. Chattel. During chattel slavery, it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, it takes its name from. Uh, the country Angola, right, uh, and the, the name African stuck, country, the African country Angola, and the name stuck because it was believed uh, to be most of the inhabitants uh, who housed the plantation uh, who were in Chateau, they were uh, from the country or the region of Angola, so the name stuck. Um, however, you know it has changed. Uh, it is now known as Louisiana State Penitentiary at Angola, Louisiana. What has happened is that. There was a, a you know, um, a, a town that was built, you know, around the prison, and it is now known as Angola. But there is a reason for this, Kilo. Um, you know, for every, uh, you know, any town that you have uh, inhabitants of people uh, over 5,000, over 5,000 population, they become a town. You get federal money for this. You know, you become a, a town, you become a city, rather. And federal money uh, is, is allowed in Angola, and Angola, 
as on, on, on the strength of not that there are 5,000, quote, citizens in Angola town, but it gets its money from the 5,000 inmates who right. are there. Because they're counted as they citizens are counted of, that as, of that town. Right. Even though, and they cannot vote. That's the contradiction. Uh, they cannot vote, but they are. That's one of the ways they, are, they manipulate the voting system. Right. Tax and, and, and just think if, and if this is replicated, right. not just in Louisiana, but replicated all around the country, the country, all over, you see what you get. Exactly. Exactly. Um, would would you talk a little bit about um, what you think are the chances of Herman and and um, and um, Albert, Albert being released anytime soon? And what is the current status of the case? And also, please talk. Uh, let's uh, talk about my dear friend and sister Marina Drummer, who has been the mover and the shaker for the Angola Three for how many years? About 30 well, or 20 well, something? Well, actually, or? she's been on board for over a decade. And we, we, we dubbed her uh, the navigator because she has really been good at navigating the case of the Angola Three. And I think she's not, not totally responsible, but she is the main factor in uh, bringing all these forces together, connecting all these forces, so, you know, to make to make it work. I mean, she it, she has because of her navig uh, navigation skills with regards to A3 has brought people from, you know, all over the, the world together. You know, mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of Angola Three, uh, the status of uh, the case with Herman and Albert, we we remain hopeful and optimistic in, in spite of the fact that. Albert Case has been overturned, and we are trying to seek bail for him. And um, you must admit that we are dealing with, like you pointed out, um, uh, the 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 quest to kill, ma'am, to keep political prisoners locked into uh, cells, or uh, tombs. Um, they could not, uh, uh, did not kill Herman and Albert. I know myself. They did not kill Sunday Ali or Cole. They did not kill. Uh, Mumia, uh, Mumia uh, Abu Abu Jamal, Jamal, as Michelle it did Gideon, so many Chip others. Gerald, uh, it, it wasn't Michael a literal Pinnell. death, but it's incremental yeah. death. Yes. They didn't yeah. do like they did Fred Hampton. They didn't kill him, uh, you they know, assassinate, in his assassinate him, him straight Jackson. up. It wasn't as blatant, right. but it's done in incremental fashion now with all of these political prisoners who remain incarcerated. Herman and Albert, as I pointed out, remain in prison, incarcerated for crime that the state know they didn't commit. And even after a federal court in the last recent month has overturned his conviction and say that he should be released on, you know, uh, 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 given a new trial or release uh, from prison. Um, the state attorney general now, uh, James Buddy Caldwell, who is an Elvis impersonator, uh, he has seen things of the, you know, uh, so he, he's, he's also an impersonator of justice. Uh, lately, he has been claiming that uh, Albert should not be released from prison because Albert is a dangerous man. He should not be released on bond, uh, on bail, pending a new trial. He said that he would fight it all the way to the United States Supreme Court, oh. and he has done uh, so far, he has managed to stifle um, the, the, the legal team efforts to, 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 to free Herman and Albert. We are still hopeful that the judge may grant bail um, in spite of this, and we are optimistic that it's, it will happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Well, we're running out of time, um, King, um, and I really want to uh, share with our viewers um, some information about your book. Will you hold it up and talk a little bit about it? Well, yes, this is a book from... From the bottom of the heat. Uh, I think you have uh, by, to hold it up next to your face, kind of. Oh, by face? Yes. Okay, from the bottom go. of the heat. Um, uh, by PM Press. Okay. And, uh, and it's uh, your autobiography? Yeah, it is my autobiography. And uh, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I thought if uh, someone uh, needed to... I, I wouldn't allow anyone to write my epitaph. Uh, if I wanted my epitaph written, I wanted it written by me. I got you. Uh, because they had wrote... I've written the wrong story. Yeah, I, I kind of sort of put things in perspective. And I've been on tour now. PM Press has um, put it out sometime about a month or so ago. And I've been traveling around the country, um, uh, you know, with the book. Uh, hopefully people uh, will, you well, know, Well, I'm anxious to read it, it myself. 
Yeah, well, well, yes, it, uh, uh, of course, uh, and we will tomorrow. Uh, 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 I would like to point out that on Friday, uh, we are at. Um, That's uh, Friday. Yeah, the Friday 21st. the twenty fourth. Yeah, we at uh, uh, Babylon's Fall. Oh, wait a minute! I'm sorry, but this is pre recorded, and we can't announce it because that is true. Huh? Oh goodness! But in any event, I. But hey, it can be. <laughs> someone can see it at some other point in time. Right. Uh, and your we show can go will to be the recorded website. and go to the website. You could either go to this website, PM website, and acquire the book, or either we have also managed to to buy some of the books ourselves at a price, uh, and the money goes to A3 uh, uh, Legal Defense Angola Fund, and, and yeah, and, and, yes. and for myself as well. Of course, All I right. have to survive. You, yeah, but, I heard that. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we have some books, here. and they could be obtained from the Navigator. Uh, Community Futures, uh, Futures Collective, Marina Drummond. You can go to the website www.angola3.org or go to www.angola3grassroots.org and All you right. can get some information on how to obtain the book. Great, and uh, I want to thank you so much for being our guest here, mm -hmm. uh, Robert King Wilkerson. And, uh, oh, you know, most people call you King. Of course. It's, and uh, I wish you good luck on your travels. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank uh, our viewers for watching. Thank Brennan King for board hopping. And I hope you will tune in next week because we're going to have Joe Wanzala here in the studio to talk about the Congo. Uh, so tune in next Friday, same time, for SF Live. I'm Ki Lunyasha. Um, good evening and all power to the people. And please free the Angola Three and all, all political, political prisoners. prisoners. What's the call? All free them all. All. <laughs> all, free all. All right. Thank all right. you Thank again you. for joining us here. I appreciate it. And uh, good evening. <laughs>